Hi, my name's Anna Schofield and I'm a local artist and mindfulness coach. I've been working now in Decorum for about three years and I run workshops locally. And today what I thought would be lovely um, as part of the Wellbeing Hub is to create a mindful watercolour picture like this one. And so the materials that you need, you need a sheet of watercolour paper. If you don't have that, any paper will do, but watercolour is better. Um, you need some watercolour paint, you need a paintbrush and some water. You also need a tissue. This one obviously I've used a lot, but you need a tissue. And if you want to create some really interesting effects, you can get some salt. You need the thick kind of sea salt that you grind up. That's really, really good, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Um, and then to create these beautiful doodles on the work after we've created the circles, you will need a fine liner. Any fine liner will do. So, we're going to begin by just grounding ourselves with some breathing um, exercises. So what I want you to do is take three deep breaths in and out through your nose. So taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Try to inflate your belly as you do this. So put your hands on your belly and breathe in and breathe out. And one more deep breath in and out. So we're feeling relaxed, and then we can begin to paint. So when working with watercolour paint, it's really important to use a lot of water. I know that sounds um, slightly mad, but you do need a lot of water when you're working with watercolour. Um, and for this particular project, it's a good idea just to choose maybe two or three colours maximum. You don't want any more than that, otherwise the page can look really cluttered. So I'm going to choose pink, which I'm going to just Squeeze a tiny bit. When you're using tubes like this, you only need a very small amount. And I'm going to use some blue, which I'll get from this palette. That's the one I want. And again, you can put a lot of water with this and just bring that colour in. This is where you need your tissue. So when you change colours, you can um, just wash your brush. I'm going to add some water into this pink as well. Probably go for a purple as well for this one. So when laying the paint down onto the page, you want it very diluted. You don't want it very, very bright. The idea with watercolour is to build up layers. So I'm going to start just in the corner here and I'm just going to make a circle and you can see that's quite pale. And then I'm going to add water, not more paint, just some water into the middle there. And you can see that colour just developing. I can pop some more water in there. And it doesn't have to look even. In fact, the more uneven the paint looks, the better. And then I'm going to choose a different colour now. And I'm going, to over, well, I'm going to get the two circles to actually touch, because then what you get is a lovely blend of two colours going into one another. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to do a slightly smaller circle this time. It's good to vary the sizes. Again, putting water into the middle. And you can see there already here where the blue and the purple are mixing. You can take a bit more of the blue and just put some dots around there. And it's really nice just to take some time now and just watch how that paint moves and how the water, you add some more water and you get these lovely swirls. And this is where the mindful element of the painting comes in. It's not a fast um, painting. You're going to take your time, you're going to build up the layers and you're going to um, just kind of watch the paint move. So I'm going to take the purple again and I'm going to do another circle here. Again adding more water and you can see already here the blue and the purple mixing which is really lovely. You're probably noticing when I'm saying I'm painting circles that they are not perfect circles. They are, in fact, quite uneven, and I quite like that. I'm not looking for perfection here at all. It's more about the, the process and enjoying 
creating. So again, here I go with the pink. And you can see already the purple and the blue mixing here, which is really lovely. Now at the beginning, I did mention salt, and I'll show you what we can do with the salt. What you can do is you can just grind it while the paint is still wet. You can grind the salt on here. And you don't do it on all of them, just on a few. And what that will do, the salt actually soaks up the water and the colour and it gives a really lovely crystallised effect. So you can do that as you're painting as you go along. And you can then add another circle. And really what you're going to do is just go along creating circles. You may want some of them a little bit darker than others, so again, you can just drop some paint in there and just wait and see what it does. It doesn't have to be even, it doesn't have to be perfect here. And just be mindful as you're painting of your breathing. Try to breathe through your nose. There's a lot of health benefits for breathing through your nose. Uh, and it also mimics the kind of breathing that you do when you're sleeping. And so you get that lovely deep breath, which can really support relaxation. going to add a little bit of salt on this one. Any bits that kind of go across the page, you can just push them back into the circle. Now, if you get some paint running here, like I've got, and you don't want it that dark, what you can do is take your tissue and just dab, and it just takes away some of that colour. You may notice some of your circles are a bit too pale, so you may want to add a little bit of colour onto those. You don't have to do it around the edge, you can go anywhere, you can kind of go here where the circles join, and you can tip your page as well. And what happens then is you can see that the colours will definitely blend into the circles next to them. So you can see the colours here blending and here. And when you're thinking of where to place the next circle, don't think too much. So this is more about intuitive painting. So you're not worried about where the circles are going or which colour you're choosing next or whether or not you've got the same colour next to each other. None of that actually matters. The less you think about this, the more relaxed you'll become. And also, you'll realise that your painting is actually quite beautiful. The less planning that you do in your painting, um, the better. I think sometimes we're, we're very focused on what we're doing and we don't let go. We don't just kind of relax and follow our intuition. So it's nice sometimes just to, just to do something a little bit differently.
you may notice as well as your water gets muddier um, with colour, the colours will start to mix. So my water's gone quite purpley now. And as I've added the, the pink there, it's more a purpley pink, which is actually fine. Um, we're wanting to blend the colours anyway, so it's going to work out. And when using colour in art, it's a really good idea to blend the colours that you're using together and let them mix a little bit. It just helps them sit better on the page. So just go with the flow on this one. So, once you've got to the point where you filled your page with circles, some of them will be lighter or darker than others, what you can do is just go through and just add a little bit of extra colour just to a few of them, just so you've got that difference in tone. My paper's curled up a bit now, so everything's kind of flowing this way. But again, that's part of the beauty of it, the, the randomness, the not knowing where the paint is going to flow and how it's going to look at the end. And again, just kind of bend your paper and let the paint just go where it wants to. Now, at this point, what we need to do is just let the page dry. OK, so what I'm going to do is use a hairdryer Okay, so I've got a little hairdryer here. The trick is put it on a very low setting. If you put it on a fast setting, the wet paint, especially the very watery paint, will just kind of shoot off and you'll get lots of splatters. You might quite like that effect, so go for it if you want. But I'm going to put it on a very low setting and hold it a little bit higher and just um, dry each, each section.
Oh, so that takes, that takes quite a while. Um, if you've got time, let it dry naturally. And the reason for that is the um, salt, the effect of the salt will come out much better if you let it dry naturally. But what you've got now is your, your page and you've got a lot, of the, um, a lot of the salt here. So all you need to do is literally rub that off with your finger. And then you can just tip it to the to the side on the table. You're going to get a big collection of salt now on your table. Um, <laughs> I suggest you throw that away after you've used it in your artwork. Um, but yeah, you're getting, you can see some of the effects here now. Whoops, one of them smudged a little bit. But again, doesn't really matter. But on these ones, you can see where the salt has um, kind of sucked up the colour and you get this beautiful crystal effect. So, there, I think that's all the salt off. I'll find out when I start doodling. So the next thing that you can do, if you like your painting like this, you can leave it like that. It's absolutely gorgeous as it is. But what I like to do is um, create some of these lovely doodles. And again, they're very, very simple. It's just simple mark making techniques. And there's a few go-to symbols that I really, really like to do. I like to circle just around a few of them. And then I've got these little patterns kind of, they represent leaves, but they could be anything. And I like circles as well on these. So I'll show you how to do some of my favorite patterns now. So you take your fine liner, and this is where you've got to be quite brave and quite bold, because you're gonna go straight on. And I would choose a main circle. So I usually go for something around the edge. And this one is calling me. So I'm going to circle this one with my fine liner. And I like to go around about two or three times. It's entirely up to you how you do this. But I am not going to be drawing perfect circles. As you can see, I'm very relaxed with my pen. And you get these lovely wobbly lines, which I really like. So I've circled the first one. Now, I'm not going to circle every single one because it will look too much. It's, this is now about spacing and design. So this one here, I'm thinking as well. Again, I've gone a little bit inside that one. So I'll come around the edge. And the great thing about art is if it goes horribly wrong, you can always make another one, so don't worry too much. It's about relaxing. Um, I'm going to take this little tiny blue circle here, which is quite sweet. I'm just going to go around that one twice. Uh, what else? This one. This one, I'm going to do something slightly different. I quite like doing little lines all the way around. They're like tiny dashes. And the great thing about mark making is it doesn't have to necessarily look like anything or be anything in particular. It's just about making marks. So that looks quite nice. Um, where else shall I go? This one, I think. I really like the pattern that's come out in this one. It looks beautiful. So I'm going to circle that one. Try and join that line up. That will do. Uh, where next? This is the fun bit, really, because you can just do whatever you want on this. I think I'm going to do this design up here now on this big, big one. Whenever I'm creating, I really like odd numbers when I'm creating things. So I'm probably going to do three with this particular dash design, just because I think aesthetically it looks good. So I'm going to go for this one. That's going to have the dashes round as well. And you can see that these are not even. I'm not going around trying to get them exactly evenly spaced. I think the more random you are with this, the nicer it looks at the end. But again, it's, it's more about the process. If you're worried about getting everything evenly spaced, you're not going to be relaxed. If you just think, well, I'm just going to randomly put some dashes here, it's going to be more fun and you're going to stay more relaxed. So. Uh, let me think. I'm going to circle this one. Mm, and probably this one, because that's got a beautiful pattern on it, which I think will be highlighted. Okay, 
So I think that's enough circles and things now. What I'm going to do is choose a few circles to put some designs in. And this one is calling to me for leaves, and so is this one. So this one, I'm going to just draw two lines coming down, which represents a stem. So this is quite abstract now, and I'm going to just put some little circles at the end of each stem, and I'm going to... They're literally tiny little circles, or scribbles even. which represents a little, little plant. And then in this one, I'm going to do something which looks more like leaves. So, But you can do anything. When I teach this, um, I'm always amazed and delighted about how people just use their imaginations just to create whatever's important to them. I always find when I'm creating art that nature comes into, into my art a lot. But that may not be your thing, so just go with it and doodle whatever comes to mind. It could just be shapes, patterns, you may be doodling little pictures inside these. It's whatever you want to do. So that's quite nice. Um, and then what I'm going to do in this one is probably just some lines. I'm just looking, I like that pattern though. Maybe I'll leave that one just as it is, actually. And in this one, I know what I'll do. I will do some of my little... I think these are like the little dandelion clocks that you can get. So I'm going to just randomly draw. That needs to be a bit rounder. And again, you can see that those are not perfect or even. There. And so sometimes it's really about just looking and seeing, am I ready to stop yet? Um, I'm not on this one. I'm going to circle this one as well. So you can always change your mind. And on this one, I think I'm going to do some small circles. You can see how I'm not spending too long looking at this and thinking, where am I going next? I'm being quite intuitive and just going for it. And I'm quite liking the results. I'm going to put a few little lines in this one, just to balance out the design a little bit. And a few lines in this one. Again, I'm going to do this one slightly differently. And I think, for me, that's finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed creating your, um, your mindful circles with watercolour. If you are interested in doing any more workshops, I do run workshops. My website is www.annasfunkyart.co.uk. I run regular workshops. They're currently on Zoom, but I do run face-to-face -face workshops too in the community, and I would love to meet you and um, hear about your circle painting. Thank you very much.